Professional medical documentation is very important. In fact, it is one of the most important non-verbal communication skills that we use every day. I think it's as important as recitation skills and other forms of verbal communication skills. But why is it so important? And I'll tell you some of the main reasons which I think. Number one, personal reasoning. I remember I was doing this course 15 odd years ago uh, in the UK. It was called CRISP course or Care of Critically Ill Surgical Patients course. The whole course was designed with medical scenarios and surgical scenario which were very puzzling and were specifically designed so that you have a mental block at an investigation or a management. One of the faculties who were actually teaching on the course said that when you're ever stuck, sit down, take a deep breath, take a pen and paper and write down the information that you have in front of you. And in that way, you will begin to reason with yourself. And with that reasoning, you'll actually unlock your mental power to deal with that medical management, which is not very obvious. And I think that was a brilliant piece of advice. Number two, better clinical judgment. I remember this one registrar who used to train with me had an extremely good way of patient documentation. She used to do something at the end of every patient documentation. She would almost form a table that uh, she would say that I think that this patient has got an acute pulmonary edema because of X, Y, and Z. I don't think that this patient has got a lower respiratory tract infection because of one, two, and three. And I think this patient needs management number one, two, and three to stabilize this condition. And because of her particular way of documentation, she had almost never had any trouble referring a patient to any specialty for an admission. Not only that, she was able to pass her all the exams without any major hiccup. And I think that goes on showing that when you've got a better clinical judgment and better clinical reasoning, you're able to impart a self-learning which does not come from the books, but actually comes from a practical experience. And she was involved in that practical experience and active learning right from an early training years. The third thing which I think is very important is professional maturity. You see, when I was a junior doctor, I used to take a lot of time and a lot of words to document uh, my medical histories. Uh, I was once involved in uh, managing a uh, cardiac rest with my consultant. Uh, the patient was received as an out of hospital cardiac arrest, brought into emergency, we resuscitated the patient, that was unsuccessful. When I started documenting, I documented everything. And it took me four pages to actually highlight all that information. The consultant who was working with me did that in just four lines. Yes, just four lines. And how did he do that? He just wrote that the patient was received as an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, advanced life support protocols were followed for 40 minutes without return of spontaneous circulation. The patient was pronounced dead at that particular time. The patient is referred to coroners and the police has been notified. Please see nursing scribe for details of drugs and the times that those drugs were given. End of story. So what I've thought is that we'll do a workshop for junior medical doctors. And in this workshop, we'll um, do an active exercise about documentation throughout the patient journey inside the hospital. I'll give some dialogues between the patient and the doctor to all the course participants. The course participant can then jot down the history based on that dialogue between the doctor and the patient. And then we'll go through that history uh, of each of the participants and see how that can be further improved as per a better documentation expectation. So medical history and a surgical history, that would be the one component of that workshop. Now let's see that the patient is now admitted into the ward and your consultant is doing a ward round and the JMOs are expected to point and write it all down in a very fast paced way. Now this is a very important communication because the nurses are going to rely on that communication to carry out that orders throughout the day. Not only that, if there's any other medical team involved, they're going to rely on that particular consultant communication through your medical notes. So we'll talk about how to be very economical and fast 
and comprehensive in that medical ward round. The third aspect of the patient care is requesting investigations and you will be surprised how many complaints are made by the radiology department against the doctors, the JMOs, the registrars and sometimes even the consultants that how inadequate the information is when the x-rays are requested, when the CT scans are requested. The fourth thing that we talk about is charting the medication in intravenous fluids. What is the minimum safety requirement of charting specific medication? how they need to be charted, how the dose need to be recorded, and how the times are recorded. Now, most of the medications and intravenous fluids in Australian health system are done all online on a patient management software. But the basic principle remain the same, and we'll go through that basic principle. So I think that's going to be very important. Say for instance, we have to do a certain procedure on the patient. We have to take a consent, or if the patient want to discharge himself against the medical advice, what are the minimum medical legal requirements for that particular aspect of medical documentation. We'll go through each and every one of them. And then finally, the discharge summary, and that is so important and so crucial piece of document. So medical discharge summary not only highlights what has actually happened inside the hospital in four or five lines, but also what do we expect the GP to do as a continuity of care for that patient in terms of various investigation, in terms of various referrals. And that needs to be very precise, very concise, but at the same time, very comprehensive. We'll do that all as an interactive exercise in a Q&A format. Um, so please do attend this workshop. Register for this workshop at www.emergencyfocus.net forward slash courses. And I'll see you at the workshop. Thank you.